Oh, Lord. You swine, Bertie! Sorry? You complete and utter... Words fail me. Have you no feelings? No, I'm not quite with you. That was the woman... Woman I love! And there you are. You're just openly flirting with her. You're... You're seducing her. If I hadn't had that wretched rucksack on my her. head, I'd have knocked you down there, there, there. When you knew that I was in the back there. God, you're a cold man, Wooster. What are you talking about, seducing her? I barely said a word to the woman. Oh, there are other ways. There are secret signs and smirks and signals. I had my hands on the wheel, my feet on the pedals, and my eyes on the road. So unless I was being extremely inventive with my ears, I can't imagine how I managed that. Is Honoria still in love with you, do you think? Oh, I hope not, for both our sakes. <laughs> I knew it! Oh, oh, I knew on. it! Don't stop crying. <laughs> I knew it! I'm the only woman that I have ever loved! I knew it! <laughs> Don't you! Okay. I'll never forgive you for this, Bertie! Never! <laughs> A nightmare journey, Jeeves. I imagine it was, sir. I was still in London, of course. And where was I? Oh, yes, parking the car at the bottom of the drive. Screech. I stole through a gap in the hedge and entered the grounds of Totley Towers. Oh, good Lord. A gramophone record, sir. Hmm, splendid. I can smell the lawn. Gathering my bearings, the very first thing I did was to... was to... What was the very first thing I did, James? The first thing you did, sir, was narrowly to avoid Miss Bassett. Madeline, she was here. Heading this way, sir. And I hid. You did, sir. Where? Where? There's nowhere to hide. Props, quickly, props! It's immaterial, sir, since Miss Bassett was... <laughs> ...somewhat overcome. This is all starting to come back to me, Jeeves. And I don't like it one little bit. If I'm not mistaken, the second thing that happened... The second thing that happened, sir, was that you ran into Mr. Budge. Cyrus Budge? Yes, sir. Junior? Yes, sir. The third? The self-same, sir. And behold, here he comes. Oh, surely we can leave him out of... What did I say? What did I say? Maddie? Hey, Maddie! Oh. Hi. Ah. <laughs> Cyrus Budge. Hi. Hello, Bertram Wooster. No, sorry, rather I'm not Bertram Wooster. You're Bertram Wooster? Uh, sometimes. <laughs> yes? And sometimes William Shakespeare, eh? And I'm occasionally Mark Twain. Cyrus Budge. I'm happy to meet you, Wooster. Say, is that Wooster as in Worcestershire sauce? <laughs> no. More like Wooster as in chicken. <laughs> Chicken. <laughs> yeah. I heard you were staying here. You drove down with Pop Bassett, right? Uh, yes, so I did. One of me did. He told me he was bringing you down. I uh, would have been here to greet you, only I've been taking part in this run. Run? Yes, the Hedgehog Run. You hear about that? Oh, yes. I thought it was a walk. A walk? Uh, so I understood, a 20-mile walk. Oh, heck. I ran it! Isn't that typical? I couldn't figure why there was no one else in the race. No one at the finish line, so I came on home. Just gonna play some tennis. You wanna join us? Uh, no, I'm afraid I've got one or two things that I really must do. Sure. Realize. Good to meet you, Wooster. Ah. Say, isn't she something? Madeline? The girl who just ran by, isn't she sensational? I saw her for the first time this morning. I fell in love straight away. How about that? She's just so, so beautiful, yes. indescribable, yes. loving and tender. Yes, all that. Good for this world. That's her. You know her then. Very, very barely. The trouble is she's in love with this other guy. Think not all. You know him? No, no. One of the maids told me. He's some kind of criminal, apparently. Mm -hmm. That was the cause of the row just now. I just said to Matty, if I ever meet him, I'd break his neck. 
kind of upset her. Oh, well, these English girls, very sensitive. <laughs> and that's why we love them, eh? What line are you in? Line? Uh, well... Buying and selling? No more coming and going, really. Yeah. <laughs> Me? I'm in jelly. Jelly? My old man, he owns the largest jelly plant in the whole United States. Gosh, that's why I'm over here. I am here to push jelly, Wooster. I hear the British are big jelly consumers. Is that right? Oh, yes, you bet. A spot of cream, a cold custard. <laughs> custard. Oh, no, my mistake. Correction, that's jello. I'm talking about, what do you call them here? Uh, preserves? Jam. That's it. Ah, jam. Well, now you're talking. You fond of jam, Wooster? Oh, yes. Come tea time, stands the church clock at ten to three, and is there a jam and so on for tea? You know how many jars we sell each year? Couldn't hazard a guess. Twenty-seven million. Wow. Jars. <laughs> Woo. And the biggest selling flavor? Care to guess at that? Prune? Prune? We didn't even make prune. Ah, well, can't help you, I'm afraid. Th 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 I would it be a clue if I told you it wasn't strawberry? Ah, well, look now, I've just seen the time. I'm sorry, I'd love to hang around and natter jam with you all day, but sure. I really... Sure. Get me going on jelly and... <laughs> See you at tea time? Oh, probably not. I have to go and look at a wall. A wall? Sure. See you around. Absolutely. I made a mental note to warn Gussie when I next saw him that another item looming on his troubled horizon was a potential rival in the shape of one jelly magnet, Cyrus Budge. Junior or senior, if it came to trial by brute force, I had no doubt where I was putting my money. Oh, there you are, at last. Miss Bingter. Stiffy, the very person. I want a word with you. At last? What does one have to do to get you down here? I want a strong word. Come on, follow me. Where are we going? Somewhere that isn't quite such a public highway. Through here. What's this? The maze. Nobody ever comes in here. Follow on. Uh, do you know your way round it? Yes, of course. Used to spend hours in here when I was a kid. Only sure way to get away from Madeline. She never followed me in here. She was far too scared. Yes, all right, this is deep enough. Now listen. What I have to say to you, Stiffy, can be said very briefly. I do not take kindly to having our engagement announced in the Times. I have never proposed to you, and I don't intend to. Save your breath. There's someone else anyway. Who? Harold Pinker. Stinker? Don't call him that. His name is Harold. Then, if you're engaged to Stinker, why announce you're engaged to me? I'm not engaged to Harold, but I want to be. I have to be. Only Uncle Watkin. He doesn't think Harold's suitable. What's old Bassett got against Stinker? I don't know. He says Harold's got no money and he breaks everything. <laughs> well, he's absolutely right, of course. Stinker's a one-man tornado. <laughs> he's not. He's just shy. And when he gets shy, he gets... Destructive. Accidentally destructive. And if I can't marry him, something else will get broken. Only this time, it will be my heart. Oh, oh he's just so, so... Beautiful, indescribable, loving, and tender, too good for this world. Well, I'm awfully happy for you both, Stiffy. I really am. I wish you the best of luck. And kindly leave me out of it. We need your help, Harold and I. We have a plan. Then you should have asked me properly instead of announcing our engagement, for heaven's sake. Well, how else was I to get you here? You ignored all my phone calls and my telegrams. Because I know you only too well, Stiffy. Well, enough to give you a very wide berth when you're hatching stupid plans. I'm sorry, I'm going. Goodbye, he said firmly. You'll be sorry if you do, Bertie. Not half as sorry as if I stick around here. You know me, Bertie. I could be so grateful. Really, really grateful. A good friend forever. Wouldn't that be nice? I'm not too sure. You don't want me to be an enemy, surely, Bertie. I could be such an awful enemy. 
I don't think you'd want that. Not really. Would you? Would you? Deep in love's maze, there my heart strays, caught in a flurry of worry and doubt. Down love's pathways, there my heart plays, whispering secret it's longing to shout. All I need's a sympathetic friend to help me find a way to leap. Love's maze is a magical labyrinth. Close paths hidden far from gaze. Love's maze is for lovers in jeopardy. Lost there in a rainbow haze. Won't you save me? Please assist me. Help me decipher its intricate ways. Love has touched me. Love has kissed me. Holding me prisoner deep in this maze. Well, you can't blame me. Cupid never pays. You'll saunter around for days inside. Love's love. maze. Maze is a mystical wonderland, conceals what the heart conveys. Love's maze is a puzzle in paradise, misleads all the eye surveys. I did warn you, I have sworn to steer a wide berth, for I know to my cost. It's predicted, self-inflicted, people in mazes do tend to get lost. All I need's a very special friend to rescue me from here in sight. Love's maze is a crazy kaleidoscope, all roads leading different ways. Love's maze like a swaying calliope, one dance where the piper pays. Love's maze is a hatter's mad party time, one feast lasting nights and days. Love's maze is a pirate spectacular, bright skies as the ball You'll never drag me there inside. Love's maze is a crazy kind like a stove. All roads leading different ways. Love's maze like a swaying calliope. One dance with a pipe that pays. Love's maze is a hatter's mad party time. One feast lost in nights and days. Love's maze is a fire and spectacular. Bright skies is the bonfire's blaze. Sorry, Stiffy, once a wooster's made up his mind, that's it, I'm afraid. Sorry. I must remember to make sure Uncle Watkin reads his Times this evening. He always sits down with it after dinner. Doesn't matter to me. He thinks I'm Augustus Finknottle anyway. <laughs> but early this afternoon, Uncle Watkin came down with someone he believed to be you. Someone who Madeline greeted as Bertie Wooster, though it obviously wasn't you. You didn't say anything, did you? <laughs> nothing to do with me. Madeline plays her own silly games. But who was that person, Bertie? Was that the real Mr. Fink Nottle? Yes, Gussie. Well, he's not going to be very popular with Uncle Watkin, is he? Bertie Wooster coming down and asking to marry his daughter, when all the time he's apparently engaged to me. Oh, that's going to get your friend into dreadfully hot water when Uncle Watkin reads about it this evening. Oh, still, nothing to do with you, is it, Bertie? No, you go back to town. Leave your friend to face the music. You're appalling, Stippy. You're absolutely the final straw on the camel's back in the last ditch. Well... 
What do you want me to do then? I want you to stay here and think about it. I'll be back later with Harold. We'll tell you our plan. Wait there, Bertie. See you later. Oh, Stiffy, <laughs> Stiffy, you can't leave me in here. <laughs> Stiffy, how do I get out? Which way's the out? Bye.